So I find it an intriguing fact uh, that there are so big discrepancies in productivity um, and income per capita between countries, even within the European Union. So a worker in Germany or Sweden or other Western and Northern European countries produces about four times as much during the day than a worker in the Central and Eastern European region. And I find it a really intriguing question uh, why that is. One reason uh, for the higher productivity of, of uh, Western European workers is that they have access to more machines and more, more capital equipment. And that accounts to about half of the gap in productivity. Another, the, the other half is really coming from the fact that they are using more advanced technologies and they are using organization um, uh, and management methods that are not as widespread in Central and Eastern Europe. So I'd like to analyze the question of productivity using firm level data because there we have more information of, of you know, what the firm does, what kind of industry it operates in, and we can control on many different uh, things that might be hidden in the aggregate data. And we see that there's lots and lots of differences between firms uh, in terms of their productivity. So if we look at, say, Hungarian firms, there are firms that are four times, five times, even ten times as productive as their, as their competitors. And the firms that are, are more productive tend to be the bigger firms, the, uh, the fully known firms, the multinationals, and firms that are active in international trade, firms that export or import something, they tend to be more productive uh, than the small local competitors. So there's a strategy of export-led development where the basic idea is that we can grow out of the crisis, for example, if we're going to connect it to recent events, uh, by exporting more. And that's definitely something that, that applies to Hungary, um, where domestic demand really has collapsed by quite a, by quite a bit, but uh, exports are relatively sustained. So that can be a way of recovering from a recession, for example. But that, I don't really believe that export-led development in the long run uh, can be successful. So I think, uh, I, I think it's partly a myth. It's certainly true that it's helpful to have exports uh, to get you out of the recession. Because exports, if you're thinking about exports, the question is, who is going to buy my product? Do I have enough demand for my product? If you want to think about growth for the long run, it's not enough to ask who is going to buy your product. You also have to ask, how am I going to produce um, more and more product during a given workday? And so that connects back to the question of productivity. We have recently completed a large survey in uh, seven European uh, countries, and the survey was called European Firms in the Global Economy, where we have asked uh, 15,000 firms about their participation in international markets and also their experience during the crisis. One thing we found uh, in this survey is that although the typical firm has contracted by quite a lot uh, during the year of 2009, there was a, a, a wide variation across firms some even grew during this crisis, and some contracted less than others. So then we asked, what is this variation? where is this variation coming from? Which are the firms that were more successful in weathering the crisis? And we found that actually firms that export to other countries, uh, they were harder hit by the crisis. And this is, I think this is a simple demand story. If there's less demand for your product and you're particularly vulnerable to these demand fluctuations, then you are just hurt, hurt more. Uh, I think even more interestingly what we find is that if the firm has, if the, firm has the ability to import uh, from abroad or to outsource production to another country, they will actually uh, hurt less. And we think that's kind of an insurance against uh, fluctuations in demand. Maybe I have fluctuations in demand, but I can pass it on to my supplier and my firm is hurt less and I, I don't have to fire my workers, for example. So in that way, uh, outsourcing could in fact be an insurance mechanism in times of low demand.